Mr. Dwyer with Mr. Jeff Plaskett. Rich, you bet. Oh, there you're back. Okay, great, great. Okay, we're we're working through issues, Tec but looks like difficulties resolved. Unlike last week. Unlike all last week. right, you got it. I'll tell you what, Jeff, I'm gonna give you an opportunity here to talk about last week. What what caught your eye that may have changed your picks for this week? Nothing's changing my picks for this week. Except, of course, two of the teams weren't supposed to be there. So the AFC, I'm, I'm starting from scratch. All right. However, I was very pleased uh, with the Rams and the Saints. You, you were right about the Saints having a problem with Philadelphia. They barely escaped that one. But I was very impressed with, uh, it was no close shave at Gillette Stadium, let's face it. The Patriots dominated. The Patriots dominated. I, I have to say that this is a typical Patriot year. We'll talk about our picks uh, for this the week. The Chiefs' defense was incredible. Luck was running for his life. The defensive line, I don't know where that defense came from. But that, right. I'll, that I'll was say, impressive. Right. I'll say, though, the Chiefs, they were an optical illusion defensively. In other words, they have Justin Houston and they have pass rushers. So they can rush a quarterback. Okay. But if you throw it into their secondary, they're pretty bad. You know, they they really can't cover wide receivers. Um, look at the numbers. You sound like you sound like President Trump. Don't believe what you see. I saw okay. what they did to Andrew Luck. If you don't have time to throw the ball, it doesn't matter if you have receivers open. He he was throwing it away. And they had a, a Pretty impressive offensive line the second half of the season. I'm not sure the Patriots' offensive line is going to give Brady his normal. I know he throws it quick, but so is Luck this year. I don't. Yeah, you know, I'm very impressed. Maybe it's Arrowhead. I don't know. They were inspired. That was an incredible turnaround for that defense. They were played. That was probably the best game they played all year as a defensive unit. So, I'll say this. I believe that's impacted the line. Let me say this about Luck. If yeah. you Look at the splits on T.Y. Hilton, his wide right. receiver. T.Y. Right. all year was missing on the road. And I thought um, Indy came in, and for whatever reason, they were flat. I agree. Luck didn't have a great game. And he I agree. He didn't have time Casey, to have a great game. He was under siege. He, he had a good third quarter, but it was the, the Colts were overmatched last weekend. It, was, it wasn't a close game. Okay, I'll tell you what. You tell me this week. Ah, this will week. Tom Brady and the Patriots be overmatched against that same Tom chief Brady defense? Tom Brady will not be overmatched. As a, team, <laughs> as a team, I think the Chiefs are going to win a very close game, but I think they're going to cover. I think their defense is primed. I think the home field advantage is the critical factor here. They're, that The stadium is going to be electric, and... You know, Mahomes doesn't really have to do too much. And he's got so much speed at his disposal. As long as he's under control, I think Kansas City, if their defense plays like that, it's game over. But I, I think Kansas City's going to win a close one. I think Brady will be have the ball with like 30 seconds left, and he won't be, but they'll need a touchdown, and he won't be able to get in the end zone. Wow. So, okay. I'm sorry, okay, Tom. So it's over. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, let me ask you too. You you yeah. mentioned Pat Mahomes. Were you that impressed with Pat in the second half of that game? Because I thought, I, I thought was, they. I think he was on cruise control. The defense won that game for sure. I mean, luck luck didn't have a chance. So Mahomes, I think I think the adrenaline. He was playing great, and I think I think they realized they had the game. So I don't know what happened with him, but you know, lots of times. Even good teams can coast when they've got a big lead. I mean, that game was – the Colts weren't going to come back. Okay. Um, so you don't feel that a young quarterback in his first AFC conference final – Well, last week was his no. first playoff game. Last week was his first, and he looked great. He exceeded my right. expectations. I privately thought the Colts were going to win that game. Well, I but, probably um, thought the Colts were going to win that game. <laughs> right. I, I know I certainly publicly said yeah. I, I thought the Colts would cover. I know that. <laughs> no, no, I thought they were going to win. You know what Kansas City reminds me of? 
and this is a, you know, I know it's a local angle, but considering where the Patriots are too, it very much reminds me of when the 49ers beat the Cowboys. The Patriots remind me of kind of the end of the line Cowboys. They still had some great players from the 70s. Okay, and that was a you're talking about the 82, game. the yeah. 82 game. But I'm, right? not, I'm not comparing, believe me, I'm not comparing Pat, Pat Mahomes to uh, Joe Montana. And the 49ers defense was better all season. But I think it's very similar because the Patriots, like the Cowboys of 1982, are a really good team, one of the best four teams in the NFL, but they're on the downside. And an up-and-coming team that's never been there before, but has home field advantage and won their first playoff game decisively, I think that, I think it could happen. I mean, Montana, people remember the catch. People don't remember the 49ers had six turnovers that game. It was a miracle they won that game. And even at the end, Drew Pearson was going to score a touchdown except for like a desperation tackle by Eric Wright. And then uh, Lawrence Pillars got the sack that caused Danny White to fumble. And pretty much ruined Danny White's career. He was trying to replace Roger Staubach, and he never could win the big one. And that was the, he was a good punter, though, and quarterback. Right, right. Also a <laughs> uh, arena football league coach, right? He, oh, right. I didn't even He realize. went on to uh, – <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's another side to Danny White. <laughs> okay. But, All right. but I'll say this. Weren't the Patriots impressive against the shocked. Chargers? They, they, just, they dismantled the Chargers. I'm not sure Mr. Rivers is going to ever be in this position again. I mean, he just got – it was like a blitzkrieg. The Patriots just destroyed a really good Chargers team. You know, I think I think it really helps to have that extra week. I know all the teams with the buy one, but in reality, these have been the best teams all year. Maybe the Chargers were up there among them, but these four teams have been playing well almost all year. So it's not the worst case scenario to have the four four of maybe the five or six best teams in the championship games. It's it's a good lineup. I think both games are going to be close, too. Okay. Tell me about weather. How you feel. I didn't check. I don't know. Because okay. it was snowing last week. I don't know what Kansas City is going to be like on Sunday. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I can tell you, you and I see this game differently, right? Yeah. You remember my slogan, same as it ever was. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I know um, in terms of football betting, wind is the most important variable, right? Wind. And wind it's going to be the most important variable. Wind. Yeah, wind. Um, because I, I didn't know that. I'm learning something here. Okay, okay Cam. No one. Yeah. The 49ers should have won every year in Candlestick Park. They lost a lot of games in that stadium. A lot of wind is going to favor the under because it's going to uh, tip passes, blow passes. DBs right. who are beaten on plays are going to be able to recover and stuff like that. Right. Now, Saturday, right now. It's supposed to be extremely windy in Kansas City, right? It's if you do a weather it's Friday. Switch, it's Friday right now, Rich. It's not Saturday. No, I'm talking about the forecast for Saturday. Then oh. on Sunday, um, it's supposed to be 18 mile an hour winds on Saturday. That's this game's heavy. being played on Sunday. Yeah. My point to you is wind forecasts are inaccurate. Right. If, in fact, it's windier on yeah. Sunday, I believe that's going to favor the veteran team. I think that's just I know I know Pat Mahomes has one of the strongest arms in the right. NFL. Right. But I believe it's tough enough for him to be in an AFC championship game. I believe the Patriots are showing you that they have the better rushing attack. Right? I understand True. the replacement for Kareem Hunt looked good, but in a windy yeah. circumstance, a balanced offense actually right. helps you, right? Mahomes is not gonna be able to throw the ball all over the field. Let me say this, too. That first game, yeah. I know people want to believe that that game was close. The the game between Kansas City at New England, right, right. during the regular season. Right. right. But New England actually had 13, <laughs> 13 more first downs than KC. New England had a time of possession of 12 more minutes, 12, than KC. Right. Um, New England had more than 50 more yards than KC. So to me... New England privately knows they can systematically outperform the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, you're telling me that you're going to give me 
You're going to give me three points. I'm giving Wait. you it gladly, Rich, because the defense <laughs> is better now. The Kansas City defense, if they play like last week, they could win by more than four. I, I don't see why they're not going to play inspired football Sunday. They, they are – they did their job. They had the top record, and they won the first playoff game decisively. They're, I'm sure they're pumped. This is their moment. You never know what happens. Look at Dan Marino, second year, Super, Super Bowl. He never made it back. There's, there's a lot of young guys. There's a lot of older guys, too, on Kansas City. These guys, this is a huge opportunity to play at home. You know, last year I heard the same thing about the Jacksonville Jaguars. You remember the Ooh. team that faced New England in Blake the AFC Championship yeah, game? Yeah, <laughs> Right? I, I heard Bortles passing of the guard. Uh, go ahead. I think Mahomes might be slightly better than Blake Bortles. Maybe. Yeah, but I think that Jacksonville defense gave right. Tom Brady far more trouble then this Kansas City Chief defense is going to. In other words, I'm expecting Brady to have over 300 passing yards. Ooh, in I'm the wind? Even in the wind? Because Tom Brady oh. is that rare quarterback who does well in windy and cold well, conditions, he right? He a pretty tight spiral, so it's not going to wobble too much. It just depends if – I guess he's throwing to Gronk, who had a pretty good game, and then – Edelman. Uh, Corderell Patterson. No, yeah. no, you have, you have some talent. <laughs> everyone, I, I, everyone I, I talent, talent for some reason. The Kansas City Chiefs have lots of talent. I don't think anyone is, could stay within ten yards in a forty-yard dash of Mr. Evans. Man, that guy can fly or heal, whatever that guy's name. Tyreek Hill. No, I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. And and Sammy's back, right? Sammy. Sammy. Right. Right. Sammy's back. And so and they've got uh, that tight end dude's pretty good too. Oh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah, yeah, he's good. No, no, they're they're good. But I'll say this: the more inclement the weather, the uh -huh. more I believe fans should rely on experience and proven performance. Like if it snows. Oh wait, that happened last week. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll say this though. You know, okay. uh, we saw a Charger team wilt yeah. in New England. Right. right, but uh, the Chargers don't play in Kansas City. They, they they get bad weather. I don't know if you've been to Kansas City. They get they oh. get they get tornadoes there. Houses fly up into the sky, and you land in the Emerald City. All yeah, kinds I know, of crazy but, shit happens there. You know, Pat Mahomes has just gotten to Kansas City. Right, <laughs> this is what his first but he, year. But, but he started. played in Texas. It's windy in Texas. Okay, well, I'll say this. Revisit Pat Mahomes' college career. You're going to notice that, you know, some years they didn't have a winning record, yeah. right? I I don't think Pat Mahomes' brilliance necessarily translates into a win. And uh, to me, New England, I, I understand visiting teams tend to do poorly in conference championship games. Not but, necessarily. I mean, that, that's, it, that's, it's all over the map. I think New England's going to play well. I think it's going to be a very close game. I just think the difference is an improved Kansas City defense and an aging team. You know, if Kansas City makes – see, unlike the 49ers giving up six turnovers to the Cowboys, if that happens to Kansas City, this is going to be a rout. The Patriots are not going to squander multiple chances like that. So – it could come down to turnovers. That turnovers always can derail even a good team. So I, 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 first, I, I just think Kansas City, they almost have nothing to lose. Brady and the Patriots, this is kind of, you know, they, they'd like to win another Super Bowl. They don't know for sure who's going to be on the team next year. Agreed. You know, so Kansas City is going to bring all their guys back regardless of the outcome. So those guys... Those guys don't have a. I, I don't think they have as much pressure as people would think. I think they're very excited to be at home, have a chance to go to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to play. You know, the, the danger is coming out really hot and then kind of running out of gas. That could happen to a young team. That's what I think is going to happen here. I'll say you mentioned turnovers. Pat yeah. Mahomes throws two picks. Yeah. That first New England game, right? Oh, yeah. You saw Philip Rivers' numbers. 
from last what week. In other words, ugly. New England's ugly. defense is peaking at the right time, right now. I guess that's fair. So Kansas City and New England are both playing their best defense. So okay. I would say if those defenses are equal, I would say Kansas City's offense is better than New England. Okay, I would say on a neutral field, given that Bill Belichick has, what, a handful of rings? Given that Belichick has a quarterback who last year in the Super Bowl had statistically the best Super Bowl any quarterback has had. I know Tom's older. Tom's also highly productive, right? right. I believe on a neutral field, New England between these two teams should be favored. One man's opinion. And that's how the line is here, right? right. Um, KC, KC somehow is getting three points. I mean, uh, is laying three points. It's the, I think they, that's I mean, off. It's even. It's, uh, that's the home field. Isn't that three points for the home field? No, yeah. But I'm saying on a neutral field, New England should be favored. So to me, you know, the Vegas somehow has convinced fans that last week's game against Andrew Luck shows that, in fact, KC is the team to be, right? That KC, you know, it's confirmation bias. People saw a great game that Pat Mahomes played. And I think they're overlooking the fact that there's a coaching gap here, right? Andy Reid, even supporters will say, isn't good at time management. Certainly looking at the time of possession in their first game, Andy, Andy Reid was in over his head. Right. I believe Belichick's the better coach. I believe I'm sorry, but I believe Tom Brady's the better quarterback. I believe the Patriots have the better rushing attack. I know the Patriots this season. The Patriots have had the better defense. And you're giving me three points. KC's a hard place to play, but a veteran team with a veteran quarterback like Tom Brady will right. be able to handle Arrowhead. That's the way I look at it. So I think it's going to be close. I just think Kansas City is... Most of the people do. They uh, they uh, they kind of faded. They weren't playing their best ball. But they're playing like a good team. Good start. Not always you don't sustain it forever. They won the division with the Chargers on the heel. And they, they've had one playoff game and they dominated. So I, I, think they're, I think it's going to be a great game. I just think Kansas City has better overall talent. And they're a younger team. Okay, I, I, think this. Bra- I think Brady's going to play well. It's going to be. It's not even going to be easy to win. I, Kansas City's going to have to get the lead. But I think if they get off to a good start, I know Brady can play catch up. That's not going to concern him. I just think Kansas City's going to just score enough. And if their defense plays well, and they can not give Brady like three minutes, if they give him three minutes at the end of the game, then. <laughs> They need to give him less than a minute and put him in his side of the field and make him try to force some action. Okay, I uh, hear you. San Diego, a lot of pro bowlers on that team. A lot of pro bowlers. Uh, The supposed talent gap didn't translate into the final score. So I know I'm striding here in giving arguments for the underdog. (laughs) We couldn't be any further apart on our predictions. All right, well, take me to the NFC. Oh, we're going to New Orleans. Fantastic. Do we have a reservation? I bet the hotel rooms are sold out there. (laughs) I'm sticking with the Rams that I picked. I picked Rams, Chargers. Obviously, the Chargers are not going to show up in Atlanta. The Rams also faded a little bit toward the end. They took a lot of criticism from the end of October to into December. I think they got healthy. I think this is going to be a whale of a game. Drew Brees threw the ball as well as I've seen him throw last week. I think they had five penalties in a row against Philadelphia. It was absurd. I think he scored three touchdowns on one drive because of the referee. I think he's going to play great. I think the Rams defense and their whole team just seems to be in sync. I I think New Orleans has a tremendous home field advantage. But again, you're taking out the weather. I think the Rams have played enough games on turf. That used to be the greatest show on turf when they lived in St. Louis. Oh, I think I this is also team. gonna. I think this is also gonna go down to the end. I was a little surprised how much trouble the Saints had with Philadelphia. I realized Philadelphia is playing relatively well, but uh, I think the the Cowboys were a pretty tough opponent, and uh, the Rams managed to 
I guess they won by six, so they didn't cover either. But I, I think the, I think the Rams were in control of that game most of the second half. Yeah, I know you uh, have been backing the Rams hard right. for a while, and I'm going to agree with you on this game. Oh, um, oh the fans will be hey. disappointed. <laughs> what kind of debate are we gonna have? Oh no, no. Well, you know, I I think everything you said is one hundred percent accurate, except uh, the part about Drew Brees' arm. I think uh, uh, I think Drew Brees has a dead arm right now. I think he Brees threw like two fifty yard passes in a row right on the money, and they were both called back because of penalties. Yeah, I'll say this. To me, something's not quite right. When these two teams played earlier this year, and I love right. to go to earlier games. Yeah. Uh, Michael Thomas had 211 receiving right. yards, 211. Right. And I believe that kind of shook things up. But interestingly enough, um, Aqib Tlaib was out that game. Uh-huh. Now, That's a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Big difference. He was, out, he was out for quite a while earlier this season. Right. I believe he's a game changer. Um, yeah. I like... I like two bets here. Um, the Rams plus three and a half. Yeah. Oh, it's three and a half now. Because it <laughs> yes, was three at the start of the week. So the money is going on Drew and his team. You know what? I think fans love home teams. Yeah. And, you know, Breeze is better known than Jared Goff. And yeah, um, sure. I like Rams on the point spread. I also like the under 57 points because yeah, 57 is a lot of points i agree with you there right because these games both the saints and the rams may not have the best defenses but they've had some tremendous games so i yeah, 57 I, I i would say that's an easy one the under on that there's too much at stake they're going to try to they want if anyone gets the lead they're going to try to control the clock there's no incentive to try to score have a 30 to 27 game, which would be at, at the number. I, I would think it's more like 27, 23. I agree maybe, with you. I don't know, yeah. something like that, on that order. Right. No, I, I agree with you 100%. I'll say, too, looks like uh, Sean McVay is imitating uh, Peyton with ah. the two back offense, right? Because CJ Anderson was a revelation against the Cowboys, yeah. wasn't he? And he was. um, he's Mr. Inside. Todd Gurley now is Mr. Outside. Right. Just like Mark Ingram's Mr. Inside for the Saints. Right. And Alvin Kamara's Mr. Outside. I think we're going to see a lot of those running backs. The yeah. um, Saints had played something well like last week, too. Ingram was right. Really good. Kamara had some real opportunities catching balls out of the backfield. I mean, he was going full speed. He was he was an impressive player last week. So yeah, the running backs are good. Yeah, this they could score more than 57 if it was a regular season game. It would probably be 40, 35. But I think trying to win a championship and go to the Super Bowl, the coaches will try to be a little more strategic. They're not going to just let everything hang out. They don't want to, they don't want to make the mistakes that could turn the game. So that's that's what happens lots of times in these games. Right. No, I agree. Let me also say too, the Rams right now on a futures play are a plus uh-huh. three seventy five. Uh-huh. So I would encourage people, in addition to taking the Rams on the uh, right. point spread line here, I would encourage people to consider that plus three seventy five. That's gargantuan. Yeah, right? and you know they're two games away from winning, so that would be a pretty good bet. I you mean, think if the Rams win, go all the way? That would be a good bet because if they win this game. There's a good chance it would be an even line of the well, I, you know, it's going to be a close line for the Super Bowl between any of these combination of teams. Sure. Yeah. Now, maybe I should look into that. Do you have a bookie? <laughs> Do you have a bookie in, in wherever you live? Oh, you know, I'm never going to answer questions like that in a tape oh, conversation. Okay. Sorry, I was hoping to <laughs> trick you into like, yes, and this is his name. Let me let me say this too. Um, yeah. I personally feel New Orleans should have lost to the Eagles. Uh, they that could have. On, they could right, have. could have. And the Eagles, 14 uh, uh, 14-0 to start that game. Right. Then they seem to lose their way offensively for yeah. a while there, right? I'll give St. Defense credit. But I do feel, in terms of a receiving core, right, I thought Golden Tate with Alshon Jeffrey and Zach Ertz as a trio 
were as good as any receiving group left in this uh, tournament. Well, Nick Foles obviously forgot his magic hat, as I thought he would. It's gone. Yes, I, it's not, I mean, he's a backup for a reason. It's tough to play on the road. I mean, he had quite a streak. I mean, he's done. It, it's almost reminiscent of how Flacco outplayed the rest of his career in that run to the Super Bowl back in 2013 or whatever that was. That was the best he ever played. Foles. Four playoff wins in a row, right? Yeah, and it should have been five. Receiver, yeah, receiver lets him down. I mean, he actually had the team moving that last drive, and I thought the Saints looked vulnerable, oh, right? Um, yeah. You know, so to me, the Saints aren't playing great ball. And um, yeah, I, I think the I think. Usually a home team gets the benefit of doubt from the referee. I think the referees look like they were on the Eagles payroll. Some of those calls were ridiculous. <laughs> you know, after the third or fourth penalty in a row, it's like, give me a break. Ticky tack calls and going to the visiting team. That something there was something wrong with that referee. I hope we don't see those referees again this season. I was not pleased with that. As I always say too here. Uh, there's something wrong with the same wide receivers oh, outside sorry, yeah. of Michael Thomas. No, Michael and Thomas uh, actually, he had some impressive plays last week. He was. Oh no, Thomas is excellent, but right. I do feel that Thomas lacks a fourth gear, and uh, he's going to have a lot of variance. In other words, Thomas is a guy who you can shut down, right? right. He's not Julio Jones. He's not that level of receiver who you can't stop regardless. He's not Jerry. Jerry now, Rice. Who's the, who's the other cornerback for the Rams besides Lattimore? Oh, he's good too. Oh, wait, is that the Saints quarter? quarter or oh, 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 you're you're talking, talking about, about the Rams, Rams right? Defense. Sorry, you're talking about the New Orleans Rams. Right. Um, they have Tlaib, and they have who's, the other guy's not a slouch. If he's no, no, the other guy's not a slouch either. I mean, the is, Rams is, without a fourth gear. Yeah, I mean, he may have really struggled to get open. Right, right. And I'll say um, Marcus Peters yeah. might be who you're, you're thinking yeah, of. That, that's uh, he was banged up for that first setup. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he and Talib were both out for four to five weeks around right. October time frame. And I think that's the matchup. Thomas against those guys that right. gamblers need to think about. That's right. why I believe you get the under. That's why right. the Rams are very live dogs, right. in my opinion. You know, I agree. I mean, no, I agree. Okay. Okay. But I think this is also going to be a close game. I I would think since the Rams are getting the all they need to do is win. So I mean, I think it'll be maybe within a field goal, something like 27-24, 27-23. I mean, I think it's I think Breeze will probably have a chance to win at one of his last two drives, and then then it will be it. The defense often clinches things. I mean, Breeze doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but you know, sometimes you just you just can't score in the last couple of minutes if if the other defense is is not giving you open looks. Right, right. I think Alvin Kamara is going to be key. Yeah, um, because I believe he's going to have to carry their offensive load. Right. I just right. don't believe in right Saint wide receivers outside of Michael Thomas. Yeah, so. Yeah, the right. running backs for the Saints would probably be the difference. If they have both have great games, then that then that could lead to a Saints victory. But if only one of them's playing well and the receivers aren't getting open, then the Rams are just going to outscore them. I think. Right, right. I I'm not sure if uh, Ingram will be able to run on Aaron Donald and and Donald. Oh, that's Sue. true. Sue looks like he's playing the best ball of the season right now. That's the right. thing. The Rams with their cornerbacks and Sue's playing better. It seems like they just, you know, that week off, that's why those buys are critically important. That's yeah, why all agreed. four of these teams are here. Because everyone's banged up. If you get an extra week off, then you can actually heal. So. Right. And the great coaches, the Belichicks, with an extra week, will then be able to stop a San Diego. Just food for thought. <laughs> Doesn't have the extra and week Andy to stop Reed 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 Reed. Doesn't have the extra week to stop Reed, though. That, that could be the difference.
Okay. Okay. We will see. We will see. Um, Pat Mahomes making the Super Bowl would be a great story. Yeah. I I just don't think it's going to be the reality. But I know you and I, I that's the game we disagree on. (laughs) He he, he bears a strong resemblance to Steph Curry with a football helmet on. I don't know if you've noticed that. But Steph, Steph, Steph's a good player, and Patrick Mahomes seems like he's a good player. I think it's going to be the defense. If Kansas City can play a defense like they did last week, if they revert to midseason form, then Brady probably will make mincemeat. I just don't think they're going to regress. Defense, well, defense usually, they don't. They just react, and I think as long as they they stay with their coverages, and they if they can get some pressure on Brady, then. He's, he's going to have to go short. Now, he's a master of 13-play drive 